All right, tonight's gonna be awesome because it's clear, blue skies. We're gonna do some astrophotography with the Takahashi 106 millimeter refractor over at my buddy Tim's house. Gonna be sweet, do some Andromeda Galaxy, maybe some Pleiades, cap off the night with a little bit of Orion Nebula here if the skies stay nice. But right now, looking like clear skies, so it's gonna be a blast. Let's go. little locking nut. Alright, so for tonight we have the FSQ 106. I have a modified Canon EOS R. Great little camera, nice swivel screen, makes it easier to frame objects from different angles. And of course the captain's wheel allows the camera to rotate and we can frame objects just as easily as possible. All right, now that the optical tube's attached, we need to balance both axes, so I'll unlock the clutches and rotate the right ascension down, lock the right ascension, loosen the declination, which, as you can see, very out of balance, very front heavy, so I'm gonna slide the optical tube back to get it balanced. When I let go, the telescope doesn't move, balanced, Lock that axis down, and then we will lock declination, loosen the right ascension clutch. You can see I let go, it is counterweight side heavy, so I need to shift the counterweights closer to the mount. All right, so I moved it, and of course now it's balanced. We're ready to polar line do that, take off the cover on the front for the polar finder scope. And we're gonna rotate 90 degrees like this. Power up the mount and we will have a red light passing through the polar finder scope. So for polar alignment with this EM200 mount, we need to know our time zone. We're in Eastern time zone here in Pennsylvania. We're in standard time, we're past daylight savings and we already set our offset scale and when you look through the polar finder scope you'll see the time and the date the date tonight is november 9th so with the polar finder scope we will rotate the polar finder scope until this little bubble on the back is nice and level with a hand controller and then we will center up polaris in the estimated year on the actual little slide for the polar finder you'll see that it shows uh, the different date ranges and of course it's 2020 so you'll place polaris in that time span of 2020 on the polar finder scope and the scale will adjust for your longitude here and we set it to plus five because 80 degrees longitude is where we're at in pittsburgh center this bubble with the hand controller and then get the bubble in between the two lines and then we will use our date and time and the year 2020 and we'll center Polaris within the box by 2020 according to our date and time with looking through this finder scope way up at Polaris up there So the system's polar aligned and we're ready to check out our first target, which tonight I think we're gonna shoot Andromeda first. So we'll connect up with our phone. We're gonna use a Wi-Fi controller to connect to the mount and send a slew command to it and go chase some photos of Andromeda. All right, so for tonight, we're gonna use the SkyFi Wi-Fi controller with the Tema 2 for the Takahashi system and by powering on this little controller, it's off, now it's on. Now this device is creating a Wi-Fi connection that I can connect to the mount 
via my cell phone and I can use Sky Safari to send a slew command and we'll go to the Andromeda Galaxy hopefully and see how well polar in line we are with a few test exposures. All right, so here's my cell phone. We have opened up Sky Safari and we set our telescope settings and we should be able to connect by clicking connect there. And we have it essentially aimed at Mirac. So on the back of my Canon camera, I'm going to make sure that we're in focus on Mirac and I'm gonna make sure that we are set on Mirac by clicking a line. But first, let's go double check and see if we are there before slewing to Andromeda. All right, so we slewed to Mirac right here in the center. And there it is on the screen right in the middle. So now we're gonna zoom in with live view and rack the focuser in and out until we get a nice tight star and then we're in focus. Big donut because we're out of focus. So I'm just using this manual knob and manually changing focus. You can see it getting tighter. By doing this and you have a fine focus right here you can just do minor movements with until you get a nice tight dot right about there and then we'll lock focus down there's a locking knob behind the focuser here and we'll lock that and I'll keep everything secure so it doesn't move around when we image alrighty so now that we have the telescope focused we're gonna click the Andromeda Galaxy up here and click go to and the telescope will slew the small amount up to the Andromeda Galaxy. All right, so the camera only allows us to do 30 second exposures. So what I have here is an intervalometer. I'm gonna plug that in to the Canon and it'll allow us to set and do longer than 30 second photos and do numerous photos without having to click the shutter by hand. And I think we will do a 30 second test exposure just to see if our tracking is okay. So down here, 30 seconds right there. And we will get the exposure started. I'm gonna turn the ISO down. Let's do 1600. And I have a timer delay. Alright, well, we framed Andromeda here right in the middle, and that is looking good. So, nice wide field of view. We did some test shots. This is the last one, just a 30 second exposure. You can really see the core of Andromeda. We're going to do a few minute photos, see how that looks, and then tell it to run those multiple minute photos for an hour or two. 